Razvan has been hard at work remaking the demos for the first chapter of the Good Course, and he made two versions of them. We're going to briefly talk about the Components 1, which is a new approach compared to what we used in the course, and then we have the one that you're going to see covered in the tutorials, the state one. Let me open the two projects, and here we have the Components 1. So both demos roughly do the same thing. You have a, a character that can jump, run, bump into the rocks and fall into the pits. And you have an AI that uses the base same facility as the playable character, but that uses AI driven input. So fake input compared to the player using keyboard input. And so these components one is an idea similar to what you would find in Unity where you have a, an entity component system where the individual components are completely self-contained and take control of the player here. You don't have a state machine that's going to make the character flow from one state to another. All the code is really contained in the individual components. And even if you look they, uh, in the um, node tree on the left, they each have their own tween animation player with the animations. The reason we're not covering that in the course is that with the node system in Godot, it doesn't play as nicely as the state pattern. On a complex game, it might be worth investigating a little more, but if you want to make something simple, and most of the time you will want a character or a chest or whatever to be a simple scene, you don't need something like that. The advantage of that approach is if you look at the player script and the character one, just has a few lines of code that are specific to the player, connects a few signals. Then if I go to character, it's just a few lines of code to tell the behaviors to process, that's it and there's no deactivating the like with a finite state machine deactivating some parts and all it's all being handled in the individual behaviors where you will find the bulk of the code so with that the next demo is the one that you're going to see covered in the course it's similar to the original approach although it's been rewritten from scratch and improved it's going to show you how to create stateful objects you have a pattern called the state pattern and with a tool called finite state machines that's covered in chapter 10 in the course in details, but also uh, covered in chapter three with the bus so that every version of the course shows some of that. The stateful approach, a stateful object is an object that's going to have all the code to switch states inside of it. Makes it so it's pretty quick to code compared to using the full state pattern and you don't need lots of files. At the same time, it gets really messy. It doesn't scale past a few states. So right now, with a handful of states, it works. You have 200 lines of code in this script, and this is what the first chapter will be about. Not only, we're also going to show you the strategy pattern, another design pattern that delegates some work to a script file. But here you go. You can see you have all the variables for uh, the character speed, jump, etc., all in one file. Sometimes it's convenient if you are working in a game jam or for all the scripts that are or objects that are fairly small or small game projects in general, makes it easier to keep track of everything that's happening in your game. I wanted to show you that because it's it's a useful tool. And you have the contrast of seeing this quick approach and when it starts to get a bit complicated at the end of the chapter, that's why the character has quite a few states, like it has these bump and jump, even though it's a top-down game, so I can show you. Uh, I can jump, run, walk. Uh, oh, it wraps around the screen, didn't know that. <laughs> uh, but it can fall in the pit and come out of the pit, those kinds of things. It's to show you it's a, let's say, fully-fledged character controller for a top-down game. This is the tipping point where you want to turn it into a state machine, which is again what chapter 10 is here to show you. Razvan added also transitions, which is we didn't have them in the original course. So there are two ways to handle uh, state machines. You can hard code the transitions like these. For example, the character is in the idle state 
if the player starts to walk, then we go to the walk state. So by hard coding the transitions, you make sure that the character can only go from that state to that state, but not necessarily the other way around, unless you hard code it. This prevents bugs because you prevent the character from going from one behavior to another you don't want to have. It's really every transition is written explicitly. And yeah, it's really about preventing bugs here. You, you can remove these transitions, but then when you get a bug, it's much harder to track down. So that's about it. I just wanted to show you that we've been uh, doing work and there's more to come. The original series will be free. I'll put it on the channel. It's not extraordinary, but I think there are some valuable insights in that. Yeah, for go to three, but it should still be applicable to go to 3.1. I'll try to deliver as soon as possible. And in the meantime, everyone is working on other things. You can see that on Twitter. You can uh, come chat with us on Discord. And I'll try to put some more news videos on YouTube. That said, thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Oh, and before I forget, uh, this project will close the previous Kickstarter completely with this first chapter remake and allow us to move on to the next one. Bye-bye.